begin my remarks by recognizing the good people who live in the Ontario riding of Renfrew and Pissing Pember for their confidence in here. me as their federal member of parliament. As the Prime Minister should be aware, February in Canada is Black History Month. I gave the Prime Minister the opportunity to join Conservative members of Parliament to condemn the racist act of wearing blackface. This opportunity was given two days after he cried wolf invoking the Emergencies Act. It was important to do so at that point, since the Liberal Party decision to refuse to meet with members of the Freedom Convoy led to the firing of Ottawa City's first black police chief, Peter Slowly. And there's no doubt the dog whistle comments by the Prime Minister to his party trolls were inflaming a situation in Ottawa that Chief Slowly was dealing with in a non-aggressive manner as a professional police officer. I take this opportunity on behalf of all Canadians to thank Chief Slowly for his service to Canada as the Police Chief of Ottawa and for standing up for the right Canadians thought they had for peaceful protest. During Chief Slowly's time as head of police, Canadians could feel safe walking the streets of Ottawa. Children playing, bouncy castles, outdoor barbecues to feed the homeless, Canadians pr proudly waving Canadian flags. Some remarked this was the Canada Day that had been missing for years. This was not the image the Prime Minister wanted for a backdrop as he maneuvered with his deputy, the Minister of Finance, to find any excuse to declare a so-called emergency. As he had purged strong women from his party, like former Justice Minister Judy Wilson-Raybould, the former Health Minister Jane Philpott, and Black Women Member of Parliament Selena Cesares-Chavez, who stood up to the Prime Minister, it was obvious that a scapegoat was needed. Chief slowly had to go. Black History Month was the appropriate moment for the Prime Minister to tone down the hate-filled, divisive language that had not stopped coming out of his mouth since the unnecessary election called five months previously. It's everyone's rep responsibility to carefully say who and what they are platforming. It was time to stop being so angry and start acting like a true leader of a civilized country. Instead, the Prime Minister used the backdrop of Black History Month to cause the firing of Ottawa's first black chief police officer. The uh, trucker strike was driven by widespread resentment of hysterical reporting throughout the pandemic by the liberal bought-off media and the attempted cancellation of anyone who dissented over the mandates, whether on scientific or civil liberties grounds. With the declaration of the Emergencies Act, Canada got noticed, but not for the right re reasons. Addressing the Irish Upper House, Ireland Senator Sharon Keoghan spoke up against the unjust and excessive force used against the peaceful protest. Ireland, Canadians embarrassingly remember, was elected to the seat on the United Nations Security Council. This government spent hundreds of thousands of taxpayers' dollars unsuccessfully campaigning for. And I quote Senator Keoghan, We've had calls in this House to address serious human rights abuses occurring in all places all over the world, from China in the East to here in the West. So I find it odd that we've heard nothing of what's been a well-publicized, high-profile, peaceful protest being violently suppressed and dispersed by armed government forces. Ranks of uniformed and armored military figures stripped of their badges and ID tags converged on protesters. An officer on horseback trampled over a disabled woman. Around 200 arrests were made and over 60 vehicles seized by the state. It's something that it sounds like you'd see from Russia, the Irish senator noted. But instead, it's happening in the supposedly liberal democracy of Canada. Terry, to the Minister of National Defence. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, the government of